All right, what's up? So this is going to be a, a video on configure, installing and configuring a file system called ZFS. And back in the day, my first um, interaction with ZFS was actually on Open Solaris. And ever since then, I thought it was pretty much the coolest file system I think I literally have ever used. And so what I wanted to go over, and, and I actually use it at home on, on my Ubuntu server. This is not my Ubuntu server, but this is um, basically I'm going to configure it very similar to how I have it configured on my my actual at-home production server, whatever you want to call it. And the reason I like ZFS is because, one, it's very simple to use, as is most of what I did in Open Solaris back in the day. This is before Oracle bought uh, Solaris and pretty much, or Oracle bought Sun, rather, and pretty much kind of ruined that whole Open Solaris project. So, but ZFS has been ported to Ubuntu. I don't know all of the history behind it. I just know that I can use ZFS in Linux, and it's it's naturally in the Ubuntu repositories, so it's actually very easy to install as well. And, man, I tell you what, it is so easy to create ZFS volumes. So, this is actually a VM, an Ubuntu VM sitting in VM Workstation on my Windows host, but um, you can't tell that unless you just look at this little thing up here. Yeah, there you go. All right, so, but what we're going to do is install ZFS, we're going to create a Z pool with one disk, which is exactly what I did in my production system. And then we're going to look at that data store and and look at the mount and the size of it, stuff like that. And then I'm going to literally take that Z, that Z pool and we're going to add another disk and turn it into a mirror so that it has some redundancy. And that's literally what I did here at home. I ran it on one disk for about a couple weeks. And then I decided that I probably should run it on, um, I should run it with a mirror just in case one of the drives die. I mean, I do have backups of it. But just the restoration process, just because a failed hard drive would be a total pain in the neck. So um, let's get started. So this is actually pretty easy. So I'm just going to, first I'm going to do the, the turn myself into admin, which I know some Linux guys are like, hey, that's a big no. But now I'm logged in as root, so I don't have to keep typing sudo everything of what I want to do. So I'm going to say uh, apt, apt get, apt or apt get, same thing. Apt install ZFS utils. And it's probably it's not going to take very long. It's actually not super large. So there's going to be two tools that we're going to use. We're going to use ZPool and ZFS. But really, we're not going to use the ZFS command line very much. I just use it to look at my uh, ZFS mount or my partition. Really, what we're going to do is just look at ZPool. So um, I do have two disks added to the system, two 10 gigabit gigabyte disks. And those are the ones I'm going to use for the Z pool. One, I'm going to add, again, I'm just going to add one by itself, and then I'll add the second into that existing pool, and it'll start resilvering the mirror. Um, so let me do this really quick. So first, let's look at dev. And I know there's probably a better way to do this, but these are literally the two disks, SDB and SDC. So those are the two that I'm going to add to the Z pool. So it's literally this simple. So we're going to literally just say, I keep saying literally, we're going to say Z pool create data store because I like the name data store that's what I actually use on my production home server and we're just going to add one disk so sdb and it's going to create a that's it and now if I say z pool status you can literally see that it's there so there's a data store pool it's got one disk it has no re, no um, redundancy at all so if you lost that disk you lose the whole pool so if then if I said zfs list you can see that it has automatically mounted that to the data store mount point. So now if I if I do cd slash, take a, an LL here, and you can see data store is created right there. Um, so now if I say mount dash L, you can see that data store right here has been mounted. Type ZFS. And literally all that happened just because I typed zpool create with one disk. Um, let's check the size of it really quick. You can see that my data store is 9.7 gigs. Like I said, it's a 10 gig. 10 gig disk. I'd say 10 gig. Yeah, I did. I said bit, gigabit, which actually that's incorrect. It's gigabytes. Uh, but now what we want to do is we're going to take this ZFS volume and we are going to add a disk to it. And I'm going to, and it's going to immediately just turn it into a mirror. Now, some, some of you might say, Hey, I want to do, I want, I don't want a mirror. I want to do like a RAID Z and just have a bunch of disks, kind of like a RAID 5, if you will, on a hardware device and just throw a bunch of disks in there, but I don't I don't have that at home. I know that you can create RAID Zs. I'm not gonna create one in this this video. I also know that you can't take a mirror and convert it into a RAID Z, which is unfortunate. Um, there's some weird tricks to it, but the best way that I've seen online is literally you just create a Z pool with, using RAID Z with the disk that you want, and then you copy the data onto it. So if it was previously a mirror, that's what you would do. You would take your mirror and you would just, if you wanted to use those same disks, that's where it would be difficult because you'd probably have to at least keep one and then your mirror would be in a degraded state because you'd have to split that mirror 
take the other disk, add it to an array of other disks, create a Z, um, RAID Z out of that, and then basically just copy your data across to the new pool. But that's a different topic. So what we're going to do, though, is we're just going to add the second disk into this pool. And I'm looking at some notes here because I had a few different things I want to talk about. So uh, let's SDCs here. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to Z pool attach to the data store Z pool. And you have to specify both di both disks. Um, I know I'm I'm at only attaching one disk, right? But but it wants the original that's also in there. So I'm going to literally say Z pool attach data store the original disk that was in it. The new disk that I'm adding it's also a 10 gig disk. And I'm going to push enter. Now if I say Z pool status, you can literally see now it says data store mirror, SDB and SDC, and you can see that it's resilvered. So there's no data in this uh, this uh, data store, so that's why it's very fast on the resilvering. Obviously, if it was full and it was, well, 10 gigs is small either way, but let's say it was a one or two or a four or eight terabyte volume and it was half full or something like that, it would take a decent amount of time to resilver. Basically, it has to take a resilvering would be that it's going to just reduplicate the data that's on the first disk, put on the second disk so that the mirror is valid so that you could lose one of the drives and either way, you'd still be good. So uh, that's actually all I wanted to show you guys was it's that simple to use ZFS. I created a volume, and um, the whole point of this video actually is because I'm going to then talk about, in another video, talk about um, sharing out this this volume using Samba so that you can access this particular volume on a Linux host from a or Linux server from a Windows box, because that's what I've done. So at home, I have an Ubuntu server, and I have a data store using like this with ZFS back, and then I'm using Samba to share it out so that Windows can access it, and all the clients in my house access that share. Uh, both for personal data and, a, and like a shared repository that everybody gets to like for pictures and stuff like that. So uh, let's just do one last little thing. I just wanted to show you that the volume did not change in size, right? Because it's a mirror. So um, and mirrors are literally just two disks and they both hold the same data. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. The simplicity of using ZFS with Ubuntu. And if you have any questions, leave a comment and I'll get to you as soon as I can.